When it comes to calorie expenditure, weekly calories are more important than daily calories. But when it comes to life quality, making memories is more important than having a six pack. Obviously, I know the, the last few videos have been less focused on workouts and more focused on general topics within the industry and things that have occurred. So I'm kind of shifting that back for this video. And we're going to talk about some workout related things and hopefully provide some tricks and tips for you to apply to your own workouts should these apply to you. We're going to discuss something that does pop up quite a lot either in the comment section or in the old DMs, which is when people speak about ab training. So a lot of times I get questions, obviously some of my previous videos I basically stated how a lot of the ab workouts online are ineffective and people were saying, cool, respect that, but can you maybe expand on that a bit more? why they're ineffective, what you should look for when looking at ab training, and perhaps some alternatives that could prove themselves to be more effective. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Before we do so, you know obviously what must be done, what always has to be done, so we're going to do it again. And if at any point you decide you like the video, please let me know you like the video by dropping a like on the video. 1,250 likes in the first 24 hours is the goal, so if we reach out, that'll be bloody stupendous. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel, and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below for comment question of the week, and I shall do so. Basically, the hat today is actually fully a hat again. I don't like winter because I'm a very cold person. I run very cold, so I tend to get extremely cold in the winter, and it's horrible. I much prefer the old summer. This hat makes me wish it was winter again, just so I could wear it more frequently. Oh my, wow, it's tight. It's like someone's trying to open my eyes like that. It's not very nice. Warm, yes. Constricting, definitely. Comfy, probably not. Today we're using Pamela as an example, somebody who I have covered a few times in the past, and somebody I have actually been meaning to revisit recently, but I haven't got around to it yet. But we're gonna use her as an example, because she's recently released a 10 minute rip abs for a ripped six pack, Killer ab workout with Willy Way. So Pamela's video actually gave me this idea for, for my video, and we're gonna talk about a few things. So the first thing I wanna mention is the whole kind of craze, I've mentioned this before about 10 minute workouts. I fully acknowledge it's fantastic if you can only manage 10 minutes, and I, f I fully acknowledge it's fantastic if you do nothing currently and you want to do something. A lot of influencers especially really glamorized and popularized 10 minute workouts because yeah, they were more accessible to a lot of people, but a lot of them did fail to kind of explain how 10 minute workouts will be effective up until a point and we'll get to that shortly. But the thing you have to remember is how much do you expect to achieve in 10 minutes? So for example, if your idea is calorie burning, how many calories do you expect to burn in 10 minutes? If your idea is muscle building, how much muscle do you expect to build doing 10 minute workouts? Things like that. I'm not stating that you'll burn no calories or you'll build no muscle. I'm merely stating that expectations need to be realistic. And that's the thing I think that's often neglected to be mentioned by influencers and content creators, which is quite a shame. We're gonna go through the workout, just for bits and bobs of it, because it, like I said, it is kind of the catalyst for this conversation. I have muted the audio because I will get slapped by YouTube. I will be here. The copyright police of YouTube will be here. They say to me, hi, Harry, I loved your video, but is that is that music I hear? Oh, okay, no, don't worry, it's all fine. <laughs> Shut up. Big things when looking at like leg lift movements, the, the crunch here is essentially what's going to bring in the abdominal region. So when we're referring to the, the abdominals, we often refer to the, the six pack muscles. So obviously look at your, your belly, the six pack. The leg lift itself is gonna be less abdominal focused and more hip flexor focused, which obviously the, the muscle that runs down below and into the upper leg. Whereas the crunch here, is what's gonna provide that contraction of the abdominal region. When, when you're looking at like burning calories, essentially you're looking at moving. Are you moving? Yes, therefore you're probably burning some more calories than if you were stationary. If you're looking at building, so let's say the muscles of the abdominal region, you've got to look at, are you going through a range of motion that aligns with that muscle group essentially? So when you're looking at the abs, I've kind of said this before, but in very simple terms, a starting point of kind of gauging whether a movement might be effective when looking at abdominal hypertrophy is, are you reducing the distance between your sternum and your pelvis? So when you do a leg lift, for example, as you'll see here, the, the distance between the pelvis and the sternum isn't actually wouldn't actually really be reducing what's reducing that distance is this crunch movement the jackknife kind of movement here would be more effective than adding that starfish to it i feel like this is kind of an example of social media altering a movement to may maybe not make it any more effective but make it look a bit cooler as that tends to be quite a common theme on on the line unfortunately again things like the shoulder taps here aren't really gonna do much more for like 
abdominal hypertrophy, but you would consider more maybe stabilization movements, like things like the plank are good for maybe strengthening and stabilizing, whereas they wouldn't necessarily do a lot for hypertrophy. This lifted ab hold movement is kind of a prime example of a movement that will probably really burn and really hurt, especially your hip flexors. But again, as I've said so many times before, just because you're hurting it doesn't necessarily mean you're working it effectively. You're essentially putting the muscles under a fair amount of tension without actually taking them through an adequate range of motion thus limiting how effective they would be for hypertrophy. And the reason I'm making a big push on hypertrophy for abdominal regions, because a lot of people are saying, well, I'm not looking at building muscle, I'm looking at working my abs. Your abs, so your six pack, are a muscle, and you must train muscles if you're looking at building them and developing them and progressing them like any other muscle. Again, like I said earlier about calories, if you're looking at merely burning calories, then essentially you just want to move. What you're doing obviously does play a role, but movement is key there. When you're actually looking at building a muscle, for example, you need to take it through a range of motion, as I said earlier, that aligns with that muscle or that muscle group. So reducing the distance between the sternum and the pelvis, for example. I'm not stating that workouts like this are ineffective. No, no, no. I think these are effective up until a point. That depends on what your goals are. So again, if your goals are calorie expenditure, then in theory, any workout would be effective when looking at calorie expenditure because you're moving and burning calories. To make a workout more effective, you would move more and then burn more calories. That's as simple as it can be sometimes. When you look at training the abdominal region, realistically, you have to be able to progressively overload like you would any other muscle. So when you do movements like this, fantastic, but when they're stuck to as many as you can in 30 seconds, there is only so many you can do in 30 seconds. And what you can do is obviously increase the number of reps you perform, fantastic, progressive overload, maybe add weight to the movement. Again, fantastic, adding weight to these movements if you're able to, it, fantastic means a progressive overload, adding volume, whatever it may be. You have to try and do more every week if you can, thus progressively overloading, thus contributing to the development of the muscles being the abdominal region. And there's a lot of people say, but Harry, I'm not trying to build my abs. I'm trying to, I'm trying to show them. I'm trying to tone them, trying to make them more defined. The abdominal definition you're showing is largely gonna be determined by your body fat percentage. So if you want your abs to be more defined, you will likely have to reduce your body fat percentage, thus allowing your muscles to show more clearly and be more defined. And you can do that by being in a calorie deficit. So burning more calories than you consume. But what would also help the muscle when it is more defined is building it. So if you have more developed abs, you may be able to see them at a slightly higher body fat percentage. You also may be able to see them even better when you do maybe lean, lean down a bit and have that definition on show. So again, it's kind of what are you looking for? I think the big push for years was again, just training abs at home, bodyweight workouts, don't need to do more high reps, all that stuff. But no, again, treat them like any other muscle. Progressive overload, sufficient rest in between, train them frequently enough, training with intensity, so training really, really hard, so close to failure, if not to failure, and staying within that kind of five to 30 rep range. Doing movements where like there's some rotation occurring, like these circles, for example, oftentimes would be utilized by content creators to bring in the obliques, which obviously are the muscles running to the side of the abs, all those good bits of bobs, like that V shape you can get as well at the bottom of the abs, you'll probably see it on screen now. But essentially, someone actually did ask me this in a question ages ago, would oblique training make my waist look thicker? And in fairness, developing the obliques that obviously sit next to the abs on the side of the body can give the appearance of a thicker waist. So a lot of people do actually avoid training the obliques in a hypertrophy manner to prevent them from growing, like I said, thus giving the, the appearance of a thicker waist. And it may not be as aesthetically pleasing, but again, that depends what you're trying to achieve and what your goals are. In, in summary, to kind of round up this part of the video at least, if you're looking at building the abs, you should treat them and train them like any other muscle group. When you're looking at maybe defining the abs, making them be more a bit more apparent and on display, you've got to consider your body fat percentage so essentially entering a calorie deficit could contribute to you getting a leaner midsection. But where your weight goes off first and last is very much determined by genetics. You cannot spot reduce fat and by spot reduce fat you cannot choose where the fat comes off your body. You've also got to look at whether the movements are effective for what you're trying to achieve. So for example, let's say you're looking at building the abs. Really prioritize movements that take you through a range of motion that essentially reduces the distance between your sternum and your pelvis. Standing crunch movements do not fall into that bracket because although you are, yes, reducing the distance between your sternum and your pelvis, are you doing that? So are your abdominals having to work to reduce that distance or is gravity doing that for you? If you are limited to home workouts and you just prefer training at home and you're maybe limited for time, whenever you're doing workouts like this, again, like I said, prioritize the movements that reduce that distance, 
but also don't be scared to progressively overload. So track how many reps you're doing and do more every week. Track how much weight you're using and do more every week. Just because you're training at home doesn't mean you, you can't grow and you can't progress, absolutely not. It does not mean you're limited either, it just means that you have to be a bit more creative with how you think about progression. So adding reps, adding weight, or adding volume. But what about if I want to train my abs at the gym and I have access to more equipment? What are good abdominal based alternatives I can, I can do? And for that, I'm actually gonna show on screen now a TikTok by Ryan Dewars, where he speaks about his favorite ab exercises. And these are also exercises that I am very much a fan of too. So it makes sense to show you how he is performing them because I would perform them in a similar manner. You guys have been asking me what I do for abs. Now in this video, I'll show you my four favorite ab exercises where we are going to be focusing on trunk flexion, two exercises at which bias the lower division of the abs by bringing the pelvis to the sternum, and two exercises at which bias the upper division of the abs by bringing the sternum to the pelvis. One thing to note though, is that in order to actually visibly see your abs, you will need to be a low enough body fat percentage. This video is just simply going over my top exercises for training the abs as the abs are like any other muscle group so they'll need to be trained while applying overload if you want them to be more developed this is actually another question that was asked quite a while ago that i didn't ever get around to answering is ryan does cover this himself in the video yes you can place greater emphasis on the lower division versus the upper division of the abs but that very much depends on whether you're bringing your sternum to your pelvis or your pelvis to your sternum but again you can never isolate you can merely place greater emphasis on like for example we can't isolate different divisions of the lats we can merely place greater emphasis on them depending on the angle we're putting from etc etc so for the first exercise this is called a weighted hanging leg raise that will bias the lower division of the abdominals however you can also use the stability ball machine though if you do opt to do it hanging just make sure that you use straps although the legs were coming up obviously bringing the hip flexors into it the pelvis was also lifting and therefore reducing the distance between the pelvis and and the sternum hence lower division second exercise is weighted jackknives again mostly biasing the lower division but we are crunching down upon bringing the external load and knees into the body again this is actually movement you could also do at home if you have a chair a bench or even the floor to some extent and obviously you saw earlier he was chucking a, a dumbbell between his feet to add additional resistance fantastic so again this is a movement you could implement into your home workouts as well and third exercise is a decline crunch bias in the upper division of the abdominals now make sure it's done nice and controlled and when you get to the top think about squeezing down then as you come back down keep your core engaged and try to feel that stretch at the bottom you can also hold on to weight to make it harder again a fantastic movement and a lot of gyms do have this piece of equipment this decline bench don't be afraid to use it if you do see it the big thing i know is when you see him, him crunching down he's not going the whole way down so he's keeping tension on the abs but he's also letting his spine roll along the bench and also roll back up a big thing when looking at like working in the abdominal region don't keep a flat back because that will hinder your ability to essentially close the gap between your sternum and your pelvis but think about rolling your spine and fourth and last exercise is the cable crunch also bias in the upper abdominals keep the pelvis stable and roll the spine by rounding the back on the way down to get that crunch then squeeze the bottom the, the cable crunch myself personally is probably my favorite abdominal movement and it's one that you can go relatively heavy on but again he made a really good point there of allowing your your back to round and think about rolling the spine so curving into it thus obviously reducing the distance. Those are four movements which I think are fantastic. And like I said, some of them you can do at home. Some of them maybe not so much. When thinking, for example, the, the rope cable crunch at the end there, if you want to, you can chuck a band in a doorway or hang it from something and use a band as your resistance to kind of mimic a cable machine or something similar. And they might be worth incorporating either into your gym routine or maybe into your home workout routine. Again, regarding frequency, he does speak about this in his comment section and I'd align with it. I, I would probably train the ads at least once a week, maybe twice a week, just make sure that you are doing so with sufficient intensity because like any other muscle group, to optimize progression, you need to train to, if not close to failure. Although I will acknowledge, admit, and accept, training the abs to failure leaves that horrible sickly feeling in your stomach. That's very much a, a mind versus body situation where you just have to power through. And over time, training to failure becomes I wouldn't say it becomes easier, you just get better at it. And you also get better at gauging where failure or clo being close to failure actually is. So I guess in conclusion, if you only have time to do a 10 minute ab workout, that's absolutely fine. Something is better than nothing. Just make sure that if you are doing a 10 minute ab workout, you're selecting movements that are reducing that distance and that are therefore likely more effective and you're essentially getting more bang for your buck depending on what your goals are. But remember, to see the muscles you're trying to work, we must be leaner, therefore lower body fat percentage, therefore calorie deficit, to then be more defined. But that is very much dependent on you, 
your goals and what is enhancing your life. Because if chasing abs and chasing a six pack and chasing a deficit so you're losing weight or whatever is hindering your life, then you have to ask yourself if it's worth it. Because like I said many times, and I will continue to say, fitness is about enhancing your life, not hindering it. If you feel like you cannot socialize and go out for meals with your friends, you feel like you're obsessing over things too much and it's creating an unhealthy relationship with either food, your weight, the gym, so training in general, or maybe yourself, is it really worth it? Do you mean like life is about balance, life is about forming healthy relationships with things and not allowing these external aspects of our life like food and training to control our lives but using them to enhance our lives and make our lives better more fun more enjoyable if you're missing out on social events because you don't want to go out for food with your friends because you don't want to lose your abs like missing one day in the gym won't make or break a physique having one quote unquote bad meal even though i don't think there is actually such a thing as a bad meal will not make or break a physique either when it comes to calorie expenditure weekly calories are more important than daily calories but when it comes to life quality making memories is more important than having a six pack for me anyway but again that is very much dependent on your goals and what you want to achieve along your fitness journey and in your life and also that's very much dependent on what you value as a person there's no right or wrong there if you value a six pack more than a lot of other aspects of your life i completely accept it and i think you must do what's best for you for you without anybody saying what's right or wrong for you because only you know what's right or wrong for you that is it that is the video now we must actually quickly crack on with comment question of the week how do you deal with calluses on your palms my grip feels way easier than my muscles on deadlifts because the calluses on my palms start hurting again personally when it comes to any grip movement like the deadlift for example unless you are competing i would likely opt in to use straps because other variables like your grip or maybe your hands will give out before your posterior chain does thus limiting your ability to effectively work what you're trying to work with the deadlift. Hook grip is definitely a good shout. It's bloody sore, it hurts, but it's very strong. But again, it's not something you could probably do for higher reps because your thumbs will will not thank you. They will, they will hurt you. But another thing you can consider is actually something, I believe they call it callus care. And you can get these kits online, which essentially are like, um, you can file down your calluses and they provide like balms and like moisturizers to prevent your calluses from becoming maybe overdeveloped or becoming maybe a hindrance. Have a look at getting lifting straps if you haven't already and have a look at callus care and filing down your calluses and things along those lines to prevent them from getting too thick and being a hindrance in your training. And also another thing is if your calluses do get too thick sometimes you can risk uh, tearing them it's it's annoying it's a bit painful because obviously you rip the callus off because they get thick and in the way and the, the bar pulls them so people do often say file down your calluses to prevent that from happening though again those are just things to consider but yeah like i said that is it that is the video if you at any point decide you like the video please let me know you like the video by dropping a like on the video 1250 likes in the first 24 hours is the goal so if we reach out that'll be bloody splendid if you haven't subscribed to the channel but have decided you're not know harry not only do I tolerate your waffle and how pale you are, but I love Minnie Mouse on your head, then please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel, and maybe even the bell next week so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week. And if you two have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below for comment question of the week and I shall do so. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my potentially excessively fast waffle and excessively iconic fashion sense today. And thank you for tolerating the video.